அழக டு மூவ் இட் மூவ் இட் அழக டு மூவ் இட் மூவ் இட் அழக டு மூவ் இட் மூவ் இட் யூ லைக் டு மூவ் இட் மூவ் இட் Hey, happy puppet day. How's everyone doing? Yes, it's day 12 now of our videos and hopefully everyone's doing a good job. Everyone's safe and at home and everything. Let's start out with a few jokes today. So, ready? Why do seagulls fly over the sea? Because if they flew over the bay, they'd be bagels. What kind of tree fits in your hand? A palm tree. Get it? Palm tree. <laughs> Likes it. And I dropped my peach. What animal is always on a baseball team? A bat. Get it? A bat. All right. <laughs> well, let's jump into Junie B. and we'll talk about uh we'll do a number talk after that. Thank you kind sir. This horse is going to have to take a break. All right, we left off. Let's see. Where were we here? Oh yes, uh, chapter 3 very slumping we did yesterday so we're doing moving chapter 4 on page 26 according to our table of contents. The next morning, I didn't get out of my bed. Not even when Mother hollered, "Time for breakfast!" She came into my room. "Didn't you hear me, Junie B? It's time to eat." I looked up from my pillow. "Yeah, only I'm not even hungry. Plus, also, I'm moving today," I said. Mother smiled. She sat on my bed. "You're moving, huh? And where exactly will you be going?" I made my shoulders go up and down. "Somewhere," I said. "Somewhere where?" she asked. Somewhere not here. That's where I said. Mother hugged me. Is this still about Jim's birthday party? You still worried about not getting an invitation? No, I'm not. I said on account of I'm not even going to that school anymore. On account of I'm moving today. Mother shook her head, and then she went out of my room, and she and Daddy did whispering in the hall. Pretty soon, Daddy came in. He gave me a piggyback ride to the kitchen. Then mother made my favorite hot cereal and she let me have all the brown sugar I wanted. She sat down next to me. "You know, Jenny B, Jim is only doing this to hurt your feelings," she said. "He just wants to get a reaction from you, that's all." "Sure he does," said daddy. "And when someone's trying to hurt your feelings, there's only one way to get back at them. You have to pretend you don't care. You have to pretend you don't even want to go to the party because if you pretend you don't want to go, It'll take all the fun out of it for him. Daddy winked. You can do that, can't you? He asked. You're the best little pretender in the whole entire world. Just then, my whole face lighted up, because that word gave me a great idea. Hey, I just figured out where I can move to. It's called "It's a Small World After All" at Disneyland. Remember that, Daddy? It's where all those puppets kept on singing the same song over and over and over and over and over and over again. I smiled. That would be a happy place to live, don't you think? Daddy just stared at me for a real long time. Then he put his head down on the table and started knocking it on the edge. Mother pulled him up from down there. They went in the hall and did some more whispering. After a while, mother called to me from the, her bedroom. "Jenny B, can you pick up the phone, please? It's your grandfather. He wants to talk to you for a minute." I picked up the phone. "Hello?" Hello yourself, little girl," said my grandpa Frank Miller. "What you up to this morning?" "I'm moving today," I told him. Grandpa Miller sounded upset. "Moving? Oh no, you can't be moving. If you move, then who will be who you won't be able to come over to my house on Saturday." I crinkled my eyebrows up at him because his conversation smelled kind of fishy, that's why. "Yeah, only how come you want me to come to your house and how come it has to be this Saturday?" Because Saturday is the day I I do my work around here. Remember he said, "You're still my little helper, aren't you?" I thought very careful. "Yes," I said. 
on account of sometimes I help grandpa fix stuff. It's called odd jobs, I think. Are you doing odd jobs? I asked him. Is that why you want me to come there? Sure, I'm doing odd jobs, said my grandpa, but I can't do them without my helper, can I? You're the only one who wears a tool belt, aren't you? I smile very proud, because Grandpa Miller's tool belt is the bestest thing I love. It has like a jillion tools hanging off that thing. It wraps around me two whole times, and I don't even cave in. Just then, Grandpa Miller made his voice real quiet. If you haven't, you haven't even heard the bestest part yet, because guess what I'm going to be fixing? I whispered back at him, what? Then Grandpa said for me to hang on for a minute on account of he wanted to close the door or else my grandma might hear. If your grandma hears, she'll want to be my helper instead of you, he said. I waited very patient. Ready? He said. Ready? I said, okay, I'm going to be fixing the upstairs toilet. Just then, my mouth came wide open. Because, like, fixing the upstairs toilet is like a dream come true, that's why. Are you going to take the lid off the top, Grandpa? Are you going to keep flushing and flushing and flushing it? Are you going to watch the water go out, out of that thing? I asked. Sure I am. Of course I am. That's half of the fun of fixing the toilet, right? He said. Right, I said, very excited. Plus, also, I love that big ball that floats on the top. Me too, said my Grandpa. I love that big ball too. And so I can count on you, can't I? You and I have a date on Saturday, right? I thought some more. Yeah, only I think there's something you forgot, Grandpa. What? He asked. What did I forget, little girl? I raised my eyebrows at that silly head. <laughs> you forgot that I'm moving today. And chapter five is called Being a Buzzy Bee. And we'll read that one tomorrow. Hey, ready for your number talking? <laughs> we talked about shapes last week, or not last week, but yesterday. And uh, remember, the, remember the shapes we talked about were rectangular prism and a cube. And I asked you guys to find some examples of them. I didn't get anyone that emailed them to me, so we're going to do them again uh, today. We're still looking for examples of rectangular prisms, and we're still looking for examples of a cube. Now, I do want to give a shout out to Eric, Aiden T, Alicia, and Romeo. They gave me answers for the last video we did that I didn't get a chance to um, add their names because I didn't check my email until after we were done filming. Sorry, but uh, they had the right answers for that last one as well. Eric, Aiden T, Alicia, and Romeo. So for today's, I asked you to find an example of a rectangular prism and a cube, and I actually have examples right here that I found. One of the things I found that's a cube is this, well, it's called a Rubik's Cube, so it's right there in the name, but if you look at it, remember we, we said a cube has to have equal sides. It has to have a square. If you look at this, it's a perfect square on each side of the cube, and there are six sides all together, so that makes this a cube. And an example of a rectangular prism I found, great movie by the way, Peter Rabbit, uh, this DVD case, because if you look, it's longer on this side, shorter here, that makes it a rectangle. So we have a rectangle, a rectangle, another rectangle, thin one, another one, another one, another one. Six rectangles all together to make up this rectangular prism. The one I'm gonna add in today it's kind of a fun one. See if you can find one of these. This shape has absolutely no flat surfaces. It has no sides to it at all. It's called, it's called a, get rid of this. That's kind of a fun one to say. It is not easy writing like this. All right, try it with me. Sphere. PH does the F sound, so it says sphere. Now a sphere is just like this piece of chalk. It's perfectly round like a ball. It has no flat sides, no flat surfaces. So uh, we could say it's no, it doesn't really have any of those flat shapes. A lot of people will say, well, a sphere looks like a circle. But is it flat? No. 
So it can't be a circle. If I do a circle here, if I do a circle here, you can see it's flat. I can put my hand on it, it's flat. So the sphere has no flat surfaces at all, it has no sides. It is just a perfect ball, perfectly around. So when you guys are looking around your house tonight, see if you can find an example of a rectangular prism. And remember, that's gonna have rectangles on it. It's gonna be a six-sided shape. See if you can find an example of a cube a six-sided shape with perfect squares on it, and see if you can find an example of a sphere, which is a round ball. Email me your answers, send them to me on Class Dojo, however you want to get them to me. Would you quit that? <sighs> however, however you want to get them to me. Thank you guys so much, and I know this isn't easy, but we're doing the best we can. I miss you guys. I'll see you soon.